recent survey of small business in Canada, KPMG found that optimism is actually running pretty high, with 83% feeling good about their growth over the next few years. And while most expect a recession, they have also taken steps to weather it. 61% said they'd done everything from implementing hiring freezes to pausing investment in new technology. But in a sign that they see this as potentially short-lived, nearly three-quarters said they expect to hire more employees in the next three years. Dino Infanti is National Leader of Enterprise Tax at KPMG Canada. Dino, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, Amanda. So, I mean, obviously, as we reflect upon just how important this group is economically to GDP, to job growth, uh, to innovation, uh, everything that's good, when you saw this data, do you, do you see the, the glass half full here that they see, uh, you know, there are some storms ahead, but that they don't see it lasting too long? Yeah, I think, I think we can break it down into the short-term and the long-term perspective. You know, um, certainly the survey indicated that they expect a recession and it's on the, in the horizon. And, um, you know, we're certainly at the end of a boom cycle and into a downward cycle. So things are evolving rapidly, geopolitical factors and what have you. The global economies are so interconnected. But let's be clear, 61% of the small and medium-sized businesses are taking steps now to mitigate the recessionary impacts. They do realize the pain is to come. And of course, that suggests there will be some changes in their behavior. We worry a little bit, Dino, about that being self-fulfilling, obviously. Uh, if there's a hiring freeze, if they slow their digital investment, for instance, does that hobble our growth down the road? How, and do you try to kind of measure that ahead of that and see there's a bit of damage being done to the future growth? Right. So, you know, labor, uh, you know, there's a there's a tight labor market in Canada, as, as, as we can understand, um, which certainly may soften the blow here. So small and medium sized employers who tie their growth to hiring skilled talent, they may some, see some easing in the tight labor market. You know, and our, our poll found that num uh, talent is the number three risk to their growth plans. Um, so, you know, there's the short-term freeze, as uh, the uh, survey had indicated, on hiring, but long-term, the prospects look quite positive from their perspective. One of the key things about this uh, small and medium enterprise category is the rate of turnover. A lot of them start, a lot of them actually uh, close up shop in any kind of given year. And that's, there's a healthiness about that. People have business ideas, they pursue them. We worry a little bit that in a recessionary environment, you know, the big banks, all the lenders are also kind of tightening up and battening down the hatches. Does it get harder to start businesses in this environment? And does that then have a ripple effect? Look, it goes back to, Amanda, fundamentals, really, right? You know, and what the survey had indicated was, look, let's focus on short-term strategies, boosting productivity, looking at operational efficiencies, um, eliminate some complexity, manage costs, and really keeping an eye on cash flow, right? So, so with these times ahead, focusing on high-margin quality products, paying down high-interest debt, and keeping an eye out for inorganic growth opportunities are, are right for this type of uh, environment. When you look at this data, does it remind you of any other periods? Is this, uh, is this reminiscent of kind of other pre-recessionary periods? Or does it feel, uh, would you suspect, suspect it's different? Because there are different things at play, including, of course, we just came out of pandemic. Some of these businesses just had to weather something that they never expected to have to weather. Yeah, you're right. And certainly the survey indicated that they don't believe the small and medium-sized businesses, that is, that will be in the same territory as the 1990s. And you're absolutely right. They survived the pandemic, uh, a, a hectic environment. And now with the recession looming, um, they're really looking at measures to mitigate the impact. They learned a lot through the pandemic and, uh, and had uh, some of the small and medium-sized business owners have been here before. They've seen the movie. However, there are some private business owners in their 30s and 40s that haven't been through a recession, so this will be new to them. Dino, so good to have you with us. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Dino Infanti is National Leader of Enterprise Tax at KPMG Canada. Well, calling small business small is a big misnomer in Canada. In fact, companies with fewer than 100 employees accounted for almost 68% of the private labor force in 2020. And medium-sized firms, or those with up to 500 employees, another 21%. In other words, big business gets a lot of attention. But as far as jobs, small and medium is where it's at. As for economic contribution, in 2020, small and medium-sized firms contributed just over 50% of Canada's economic output. 
And now here's some good news. This group finds itself incredibly resilient in this pandemic, which is partly why it feels confidence now about the challenges ahead. Rocco Rossi is president and CEO of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, which is celebrating Small Business Week this week. Rocco, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for shining a light on this, Amanda. Oh, I would always like to trot out those stats, Rocco, because we do give so much attention to that tiny little 2% of the really big businesses uh, in this country. The vast majority, of course, of private enterprise is small and medium sized. They've gone through the ringer. Uh, so, in this week where we're focusing on them, I wanted you to kind of give us a sense of how they're feeling, how you think post-pandemic, can we say post-pandemic, wherever we are in this pandemic, uh, and I, I possibly pre-recession, uh, how are they feeling? Look, at entrepreneurs by their nature are positive people. Otherwise, you wouldn't go into business because you, you have to put up with a lot of no's, you've got to put up with problems, you're taking enormous risks. And there's no question the um, the pandemic period um, has just been a, a gut punch for so many. And there's no question also that we we haven't seen um, the end of the losses of businesses because now that the subsidies have come to an end, now that loans are being called, now that interest rates are rising, you're going to see some of uh, what Schumpeter used to refer to as creative destruction. Um, because there are walking wounded. Nonetheless, there's a vibrant um, entrepreneurial spirit in this, in this country. They're facing significant headwinds in terms of inflation, in terms of signals of potential recession. And the single biggest issue, they're, they're really worried and concerned about labor shortages because this is this is something that's been accentuated by covid but predated covid and will exist long after we're in the post covid period because the actuarial tables don't lie we have an aging population and without significant immigration and really thoughtful policies around productivity around reskilling around increasing participation rates of all sec segments of society, we will be facing these issues for years to come. You know, Rocco, a CEO said to me this week, it's time that businesses started treating HR like the strategic part of their business that it is. Do you think that we're there yet? And that sounds sort of obvious, right? Your, your people are your most important asset. And yet they are often treated like an afterthought. In these tight labor markets, is that changing? Absolutely, it's changing because there's a burning platform for a lot of, of companies. We survey our companies on a regular basis, and you know, Dino uh, laid out a number of the survey results that they had. But for many years, the skills gap has been at the top of the list for our members in terms of what they see as a risk to their future growth and the future growth growth of the province and the country as a, as a whole. So yes, they are taking it uh, very seriously and it's something that also public policymakers need to be taking seriously because as you well know, small, medium sized entrepreneurs, they're wearing many hats. So they're head of HR, but they're also head of production. They tend to be the CFO, they tend to be uh, wearing all of the all of the hats, so there's only so much time, and so some of these issues, really, government has to be seized with them in order to provide the environment within which these companies will continue to thrive. Rocco, great to have you. Appreciate your time. Always a pleasure. Rocco Rossi, too big to ignore. Small business. Too big to ignore. Presidency of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. Coming up, we keep talking about a new dawn for labor with more bargaining power, but will a recession arrive just in time to derail it? But first, this. Just in time for Halloween, a little trick-or-treat from Canada's biggest grocer. Loblaw says it will freeze prices on some products until January. That's the treat. The trick? They'll do it on their own private label brands. Some 1,500 items, which should serve to drive more buyers to those products. Could be that what they miss on the price side they make up by volume. That's not for us to say, but as PR stunts go, this one feels priceless. Back after this.